Hello and welcome to another segment of Interviews That Matter. I'm your host Raj Mehta. Friends, in this segment we bring those guests who influence our lives. This includes elected officials, policy makers, heads of major organizations and other dignitaries. It is my sincere hope that the knowledge brought in by this guest will help our community. Today we have such guest, Mr. Jerry Kramer. Mr. Kramer was an assemblyman for the state of New York for 23 years. He has published a recent book called Winning Albany. Let's meet Jerry. Jerry, thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. Appreciate you taking time this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, Jerry, I know you for a long time. Um, you've been involved in many, 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 many different things. Uh, but for the benefit of our viewers, can you tell us who you are? Well, I'm, I'm, I, I'm Arthur Jerry Kramer. Most people call me Jerry. Right. Um, I grew up in, in Long Beach, New York. Right. Um, started in the weekly newspaper business as a young kid. Um, learned how to write and, and, and do things that you do with the newspapers. I had the political bug in my, when I was think, about 12. Hmm. Got involved with candidates. By the time I was 14, I was writing speeches for politicians. Wow. Um, helped other people in their campaigns. And then uh, in my 20s, I decided, I was an attorney. I got admitted to the bar. I was the city attorney in Long Beach. And then in 1965, I ran for the state legislature. Spent 23 years there. Uh, was chairman of Ways and Means for 12 years. Um, chaired the Energy Committee. Um, I left the legislature in 1990. Mm -hmm. Determined to be relevant after I left office. Mm -hmm. Um, now I've been a member of the board at Hofstra University for 22 years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm vice chairman of the private college board in New York State. Mm -hmm. I'm on a state commission appointed by the chief judge. Mm -hmm. I'm on the board of the Tillis Center here on Long Island. Mm -hmm. um, and I head up an energy association, which is a statewide group. Mm -hmm. um, and I do a lot of lobbying work around the state and in Washington. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm enjoying myself, um, my life. I'm enjoying my wife. And uh, I have two girls, one who's graduating this coming year, mm -hmm. and, uh, and two who live on Long Island. I'm having fun. And keeping busy. Very. Very busy, right? And we've got a book now. So. Oh, wow. Okay. We'll talk about the book a little later. Right. Uh, but, you know, let's go back to your legislature. I mean, you know, you, you had a bug since you were 12. Political bug, that's what you call it, yes. right? Obviously, uh, anyone inspired you or have, have you, who is your mentor? Um, well, I had a mentor in politics locally. Uh, his mm -hmm. name is long, long, long deceased, Phil Cohut. Mm -hmm. He was a police commissioner. He was mm -hmm. a party leader. Right. He was respected around the country by all the Democratic leaders. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And he, uh, he guided me uh, along the way, mm -hmm. suggested things that I might want to do. Uh, mm -hmm. I went from one position to another one, but um, he was my mentor, and I was proud to have him as a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, and I've sort of made my mind up from day one that, you know, I love politics, mm -hmm. but bipartisanship is very important to me. Mm -hmm. Having good relationships with both sides mm -hmm. is critical to success. Mm -hmm. I practiced it, and then over the years in Albany, I practiced it even more. Mm -hmm. I made a lot of friends on the other side of the aisle, mm -hmm. and I'm happy that I did it because I know that I was effective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, so 20, uh, what, 23, 23 years, years. 23 years as an assemblyman, right. New York State assemblyman, and uh, chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, which is a very powerful committee. Yes, sir. And Long Island, well, Long Islander to be there, I mean, that's not easy. Well, I'm the only uh, Democrat from the suburbs, whoever was chairman of Ways and Means. Mm. They're always from the city. Right. But I, I'm happy to say I mastered uh, the uphill climb by, I think, I like to think because I was competent. Uh, I also felt that the people in the party, the leaders, liked mm -hmm. me. Okay. Um, I probably was not confrontational, but the answer was I worked well with people. And when it was, when it was time for the chairs to move, um, I was lucky that I, I was appointed chairman, mm -hmm. and I served for a number of speakers, number of governors, mm -hmm. um, and I had a phenomenal experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how did I mean? You said you you know I. People tell you that you are a straight shooter. A state shooter? Straight shooter. 
I help. I think that. I like to think that way. You like to think that. Does has that helped you? Because many times you don't. People don't like it when you tell them the truth. Well, a little dose of truth will not kill anybody. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, an overabundance of truth could be a dangerous thing. <laughs> the the idea somewhere in between is a, an expression called politically correct. Mm -hmm. You you do what you feel is proper. Right. You say what you think is appropriate. But you recognize that you can't cause havoc for yourself by going over the line. And I've managed to do that. And sometimes, you know, I, maybe when I speak out, not everybody likes it. But my feeling is uh, I, I'm at peace with myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So experience teaches you, or you had that? Experience. I, I made my share of mistakes. Mm -hmm. But the whole point in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in having mistakes is to learn from them. Yeah and just make sure that uh, you don't do it again. Mm -hmm. How many governors, like you worked under uh, Cuomo? Nelson, Nelson Rockefeller, Mario Cuomo, Mario Cuomo. Hugh Carey, yeah. mm -hmm. and the beginning of George Pataki's term, oh. and I left. Oh, then you, then you left. Yeah, but I've mm -hmm. dealt with them all. Yeah, and all very well, rather, dealt with them. Yeah, well, I mean, the relationships were good. Uh, Hugh Carey was the easiest to deal with. Yeah. Nelson Rockefeller was a billionaire. So he didn't have much respect for the legislature, but oh. we, uh, I was, and I was not in a position of power then. I was a junior, right? So okay. I, you know, we we mm -hmm. we got along, mm -hmm. and Mario Cuomo I was very friendly with, mm -hmm. had a nice relationship with him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so uh, you know, I've uh, I've had a good run. So then after that, you just you know, practicing law. Um, I do a lot of government work, lobbying, yeah, lobbying, you know, and 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 you know, representing municipalities, representing trade associations, right. mm -hmm. 5,000 mm -hmm. doctors, mm -hmm. charter bus operators, a very large energy group with 200 mm -hmm. members, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, public service, electric and gas, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. taking over the Long Island system. Um, so I have a lot of prestigious clients, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm having fun, and occasionally I practice a little law. Mm -hmm. But my government work is, look, I have a lifetime of knowing people. Right. So right. it fits in well with what I'm doing. Right, right, yeah. The PSEAG, right, you know, that they, are, they have taken over LIPA's work, most of the work, I believe, right? Yes. And uh, uh, what do you think? Is it right move or wrong by Governor Cuomo? Well, I think it's good because, you know, before this whole plan came up, right. you had LIPA as a, as a conduit. Right. In short, all the business was really passing through to the national grid. Mm -hmm. And LIPA really wasn't exercising a lot of you know, mm -hmm. uh, careful looking at mm -hmm. what was going on. Mm -hmm. And National Grid was paid handsomely. Uh, basically, any time they asked for more money, they got it. Mm -hmm. um, now Public Service Electric and Gas comes along. Mm -hmm. They have to meet certain benchmarks. They don't get any extra money unless customer satisfaction, taking care of storm response, tree trimming, things like that. They don't do those things. They just have a basic contract. So this is the contract. It's already in the contract with PSNG. Yes. And therefore, and LIPA staff has kind of reduced to very little. They say it's people. being cut in half, but you know, right. only time will tell. Oh, so they may go up again. A <laughs> little bit. Because, you know, that's what I just heard, that it's not enough people to manage that PSNG Well, that they need a core group. Right. So, it, so could it be 60 instead of 40 or 50? Probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, energy is your, I mean, that's your favorite subject, right? I mean, you've been, Very you much have so. also, you know, like legislation, when you were a legislator, you also passed bills. Again. I, um, I, I wrote a, a bill which is known as the Original mm -hmm. Power Plant Siding Law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of that law was mm -hmm. to allow companies that wanted to build new energy facilities mm -hmm. to understand mm -hmm. the process to get a permit. Right. And we I worked on that for a couple of years. We passed it in 1974. Um, the legislature redid it about two years ago, and mm -hmm. I worked with the legislative leadership on the, on the framework of the bill because mm -hmm. uh, we, we really didn't want it to be changed to the extent that it would discourage people from applying for, for a permit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was a long drawn out battle, but then eventually we got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, alternative energy, that has become really, you know, uh, a big thing in U. I mean, well, it's not as big in U.S., but it's outside anywhere in the world. I mean, you know, China, Germany, they are really big on alternative energy. And U.S., especially New York, we are still way behind. And uh, I, I, is there any, do you know of any legislation which is encouraging alternative energy? Like LIPA rebate is also now kind of gone. 
very little. Well, the, the, there's, there's a bill pending in the legislature which mm -hmm. which encourages the use of solar. Right. Okay? Right. But you know what it is? There's mm -hmm. nobody seems to agree on a particular mm -hmm. source of energy mm -hmm. that's going to be the long running one mm -hmm. that's going to be productive that's going to be in place of mm -hmm. nuclear, coal, mm -hmm. gas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, every, every, everybody talks about it. Mm -hmm. Somebody once said, a famous uh, mm -hmm. politician, mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. talks about the weather, nobody does anything about mm -hmm. it. <laughs> everybody talks about it, uh, alternative energy, right. but there's nothing uh, on the table right now to, to yeah. replace the, the traditional power. Mm. See, that's what bothers me. I mean, you know, because I have been, you know, I started a solar, I wanted to start a, you know, solar manufacturing company here right. with, uh, based on the uh, six technology. And six technology has been invented here in U.S. Uh, by, you know, Renewable Lab. And, you know, we needed a funding, but obviously, you know, we couldn't get it because, you know, like uh, I, I went to many legislators and it was very difficult to get any backing from anybody. And therefore, we couldn't do that. But at the end of the day, you know, so uh, alternate. I mean, the the demand for electricity and energy is really going to grow because of electric cars, because of all these consumption that we do. It's going to mm -hmm. grow. So you're yeah, going mean, to need you know, to find something. We're we're plugging a lot of stuff into the outlet, plus mm -hmm. cars. Exactly. You know, yeah. and and you know what it is? It's maybe right this minute we don't have a crisis. Right. At all. Right. But w it's coming down the line, mm -hmm. and you know you have a, a, a group in this state right. uh, of you know the not in my backyard crowd mm -hmm. who don't want anything. Mm -hmm. right. Then you have people who say they are environmentalists, right. but they're against just about everything. They even protest against wind farms. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the answer is, uh, mm -hmm. you've got to get something done to meet the future, and the the anti groups uh, keep saying, well, we want all these new forms of energy. That's not going to fill the gap for what we need now. Exactly right. Yeah, because you know, if you don't if you don't do anything, it's going to be you know. It's, uh, well, ten years from now is right. the cr is crunch time. Right. It'll be a crunch time. Right. Yeah. So there is no way to really you know encourage the legislator to do something. Right. Is that? No. You know, but it is. is I mean, there are certain things in the state government that are not very sexy. Mm -hmm. a prison reform. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to be involved with prison reform, mm -hmm. energy, alternatives. Mm -hmm. Th there's, there's nobody, I mean, there's a couple of people who are very dedicated, mm -hmm. but nobody is championing, you know, mm -hmm. new forms of energy. You know, mm -hmm. you can say, well, we want solar. Mm -hmm. Well, just remember one thing, Raj. Mm -hmm. The sun doesn't shine in New York that often, mm -hmm. right? It mm -hmm. does in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. You know, they want wind, okay? Mm -hmm. You go to build a wind facility in right. upstate New York, right. and the community comes out against it. Mm. They don't mm -hmm. like the noise. They think you're going to kill birds. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, this is crazy. Our, our energy picture is uh, more muddled now than it ever was. Right. But see, anything we do or anything anybody does, there's always people who will be against it. Yeah, but... The, Somebody you know, has to make a bold decision. Yeah, well, the, my... Uh, the, I don't like to quote myself, but in a speech I made two weeks ago mm -hmm. right. at an energy conference, right. I said it's time for the energy industry mm -hmm. to be to play offense mm -hmm. and stop playing defense. Right. I said you're playing too much defense all over the state. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. against you on this, they're against you on that. Yeah. And the point is you've got to start coming out and fight a little bit more. Exactly. Be a little bit more aggressive. Right. right. And that's what mm -hmm. we're pushing for. Okay, good, good. Because you know, I think uh, the uh, other countries like China, they are right. really, you know, dumping solar panels like crazy. I mean, they, you know, obviously uh, when we wanted to start our business, you know, solar manufacturing, our cost right. would have been dollar thirty-eight. Now Chinese are selling a dollar per watt, you know, uh, for the panels. I'm, you know, so, but because you know Chinese government helps them actually right. to sell cheaper. You know, uh, our, you know, we can't do it. They undercut us. Right, they undercut us. That's we a can't. serious problem. That's a serious um, problem. And you know, uh, the government, it's another one of those things you read about in the papers. Mm. Mm. The government's going to look at it, the Congress is going to look at it, you know, in the meantime the Chinese continue to, you know, dump all this stuff here. Exactly. Um, I know a solar um, manufacturer in western New York mm -hmm. who went ahead and put in a lot of money to buy an old facility that was once owned by another company involved with them, mm -hmm. and then they they they're creating all types of solar um, energy equipment, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. materials, stuff like that, mm -hmm. and they're getting killed with these Chinese imports. Yeah, because you know at the end of the day, people look for cheap. People look for their pocketbook well, anyway. Yeah. I mean that's uh, well, but 
but at the same time you know i went to many you know uh, congress people and all that and everybody is they want to do it but they they cannot help you so, i don't know well, you know so well, how you you know you're um, in you are a guru you are a pundit of you know this thing well i i'm uh, again i i criticize the industry mm -hmm. i say be out front be more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Who are you going to? You're not going to inflame anybody, right? Uh, you know, down in Washington, we right. have uh, the right wing with the mm -hmm. Tea Party people, mm -hmm. and in New York, mm -hmm. we have the naysayers. Mm -hmm. So it's, they're mm -hmm. on the far left, the, the other people on the far right, mm -hmm. and the net result of it is one group is not for anything, and the other group winds up not for being anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, is it what? Like why? You know, like for example, a environmentalist group, they are they are opposed to everything, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how many people are there? Is there a vote issue? Is there a PR issue for the legislators I'm talking about? Well, the, the, I, I, I criticize industry because industry has not been more outgoing on their issues. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. a Consolidated Edison makes a rate increase application. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Governor comes says, I don't want them to get a rate increase. Mm -hmm. Built into that rate increase mm -hmm. is a large amount of money for cyber security, mm -hmm. which is crucial. You don't want somebody outside hacking the the energy system mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. shutting it down. Yep. So yep. these are important expenditures, mm -hmm. and and the politicians just can't say I don't want it mm -hmm. when there mm -hmm. are parts of it that are very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If anything, we should pick out the good parts, if that's the question, and try to you know make sure that they go through. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, when you talk about cybersecurity, I mean that's also is you know cyber attack. I mean, that could be the most dangerous thing that can happen, like small businesses, right? Right. I mean, I do, I, you know, I had put a proposal uh, with Senator Schumer that small businesses are the most vulnerable people for the cyber attack. Right. But they don't have proper, you know, firewalls, they don't have proper thing, you know, it, 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 and, and they all are depending on the computers, their computers, and their day to day. If they lose everything, they're done. Well, computers crash, computers right. get hacked. Right. Well, you know, w I don't know for sure, but you know, we read in the papers about mm -hmm. uh, groups in China right. who spend their time, you know, uh, destroying the American system, right. hacking into it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Obviously, countries that we don't have good relationships with, whether it's <coughs> Syria or Iran or others, right. they, I'm sure that they've got people in there who are trying to undermine our system. Mm -hmm. So the answer is, is you know, we've got all these enemies surrounding us. Mm -hmm. And we should be spending whatever it is mm -hmm. to protect our systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you this, you know, that I know, so let's say, for example, common person like me, and you are the legislator, and if I want to get attention, your attention, what do I need to do? Because you got a million things here. Well, as a legislator, right? Well, first of all, never assume I know what your subject is. Okay. All right? I may know you, but okay. until you educate me on right. um, what you're doing, you right. need face-to-face -face meetings. Okay. They're very important. Y you must understand most legislators mm -hmm. are not familiar with about 95% of what comes before them. Right. Many instances they see it for the first time mm -hmm. on very short notice. Right. But if you've been before the, mm -hmm. the individual legislators, mm -hmm. people in leadership, Mm -hmm. and you've talked to them and you've stated your case and you've told them what you're trying to accomplish, mm -hmm. uh, they remember. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the idea is you have to be in their face. If you want to make policy, if you want to make laws, they've got to know who you are, your, what your business is, and mm -hmm. what your issues are. Mm -hmm. So it's critical to be in their face. Mm -hmm. Is it easy to get to on their face? Um, I think so. I think most legislators, so? if you know their schedules, and by and large, you know that the uh, the congressmen generally are available on Monday, state legislators are available on Thursday and Friday, you know, you can make your case. I was just on the mm -hmm. phone today uh, mm -hmm. setting up an interview with a congressman for some time next week okay. because they're going to go into recess, I think, by the weekend. Okay. So, okay. Uh, I, you know, you, but you've got to aggressively pursue it. Right, right, okay. Terry, we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Okay. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Interviews That Matter. I'm your host, Raj Mehta. We're having a conversation with Jerry Kramer uh, used to be an assemblyman for 23 years and is, is wearing multiple hats. Now we're going to talk about his latest book. The book he has written, his name is Winning Albany. 
Untold stories. Untold stories by famous uh, and, and not so famous people. Right. right? Yes. Jerry, first tell me what prompted you to write this book? I mean, you, you, you didn't write. This is the first book, right? Right. First book I've ever so written. So what prompted you writing? I mean, you're busy. Um, went to a, uh, a dinner meeting that Bill, Cl former President Clinton, spoke at. Okay. And at that dinner, he said that everybody should sometime in their life write something about their recollections and their experiences, whether it's 10 pages, 100 pages, 1,000 pages, just do it. Because it's a legacy for your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for your children and grandchildren and your great-grandchildren to know what you did and what you stood for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then if you've got positions on things mm -hmm. or you've had a history, a life history, mm -hmm. talk about it. Mm -hmm. And so that combined with the fact that one day I looked through my file cabinet and mm -hmm. I found these phenomenal pictures with the Pope, Jacqueline mm -hmm. Kennedy, Walter Mondale, Yitzhak Rabin, Gloria Swanson, Pat Moynihan, mm -hmm. and there were just so many mm -hmm. fascinating figures, all of whom I had a dialogue with. Uh -huh. And so I said, aside from telling my story, mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. don't I recount some of the conversations I had mm -hmm. with these mm -hmm. very interesting people? Right. So you started writing. I started writing, it was about two and a half years ago. Okay. My wife kept, kept goading me. She <laughs> said, you're going to write a book, get it done. You know, I hear, I hear you're writing a book, when are you going to finish it? And so I, I just, one day I said, you know, I'm going to prepare an outline during the summer. Right. Um, in the fall, I'm going to start to uh, write chapters. Mm -hmm. Then I kept moving them around and rearranging them. Mm -hmm. Then I found a publisher right. uh, and I decided to self-publish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know, one day mm -hmm. I looked at this book that just came from the printer and I said, boy, that's me. That's pretty good. <laughs> Very nice. Congratulations. Thank you. But you know, uh, one thing I tell you, is this, uh, the advice from President Clinton was great. I mean, you know, right. it's really good, the advice. Um, but it's common people, common people like do I, do you like, do you write every day something or you, you know, when you, let's say for example, you go back 15 years ago and what was the conversation with Pope, I mean 10 years ago, whatever. You know, that's not easy to recollect those yeah. things, right? Well, so do you keep writing every I time? I didn't keep a diary, but okay. what I did was sort of keep a log book, okay? Okay. I'd have a meeting, I'd had an audience with the Pope in Rome. When I came home, mm -hmm. I wrote down briefly a synopsis of what we discussed. Good. Okay. Met with Hillary Clinton. Right. We talked about certain things. Wrote mm -hmm. it down. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Had a dinner meeting with Yitzhak mm -hmm. Rabin. Mm -hmm. uh, came home that night and made mm -hmm. some notes. Mm -hmm. So I had these notes. It wasn't a diary because no politician should write a diary because you never know in whose hands it's going <laughs> to go. So, but I, I, I had notes to, to work on. Right. And you know, it, it's like everything else in human beings. My past memory is phenomenal. What I had for breakfast today is may be an issue as to whether I remember it. <laughs> but um, I just, I, I have a lot of stories to tell and uh -huh. so I put them in a book. Wow, okay, okay, so all the notes became a book basically. Exactly. Right? And personal recollections. I mean, personal look, recollections. if you live it, right, and you know, and you have a decent memory, right, you can recite section and verse. Right. I mean, I look at it now and I said, you know, I left out that or I really should have mentioned that, but you know, that's the reason for another book. Yep, oh yeah, another book or another version. Right, Something exactly. Like that, right? So tell us about the book now. What is what did you what are the content of the All book? Right. Let's let's say it's three parts. Okay. The first part is right. uh, my starting out as a kid in the Bronx and then Brooklyn and coming to Long Island. My mm -hmm. father and mother, immigrant parents, both came from Romania, okay. first generation American. Okay. Moved into uh, Long Beach, New York, a great political place to live mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. It was a hotbed of politics. Mm -hmm. I slowly mm -hmm. worked my way through the system weekly newspaper reporter while I was going to school, working nights, mm -hmm. writing articles, writing stories, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. crime scenes, anything you could think of. Mm. Then I was uh, semi, uh, sort, of, sort of an editor of one of the papers mm -hmm. while I was in law school, mm -hmm. uh, then graduated law school and really got myself immersed into politics. Mm -hmm. And so what the book does in the first part is talk about how I got into the legislature eventually okay. and how I worked myself up in the leadership Mm -hmm. Keeping in mind, mm -hmm. if you come from the suburbs, people in New York City don't always treat you that well. That, that's right. You know, I mean, Long Island is always unfairly treated, I believe. Yeah. So my job was to get some respect right. for Long Island. Right. Then, you know, uh, so the first part really starts with, uh, you know, my beginning, mm -hmm. uh, right mm -hmm. through the times I was in Albany. Right. The second part is mm -hmm. about the process in Albany. Okay. The people, 
the conflicts, the issues that mm -hmm. go on, mm -hmm. the governors, their different uh, character traits and mm -hmm. their I interesting things about them. Mm -hmm. And then the third part is I was fortunate mm -hmm. to meet so many important people that maybe the public remembered or doesn't remember. Mm -hmm. And so I recounted with pictures and words mm -hmm. Their advice to me when we met, mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. interesting, uh, Pope mm -hmm. John Paul, we had just come back from New York mm -hmm. and I had a private audience mm -hmm. and we talked about his trip and he told me how weary he was from going from mm -hmm. Catholic school to Catholic school to Catholic school mm -hmm. and the demands being made on him to, mm -hmm. to travel around. Mm -hmm. And we talked mm -hmm. about the issue of your face to the public. Right. And okay. he told me as tired as he is, he, mm -hmm. he understands how to smile mm -hmm. and stay wow. friendly and not mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. that you're weary. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. said, and that should be your formula, mm -hmm. he said, mm -hmm. as to the way you live. Wow. And there were a lot of other people who, you know, just gave mm -hmm. practical advice. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I said, you know, these are great experiences, but that's the three parts mm -hmm. of, of the book. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, 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 you know, it's not being egotistical to mm -hmm. have a book where a uh, hundred pages mm -hmm. talk about how you started off and what you did mm -hmm. because it's meant to be a road map right. for other young people exactly. who want to pursue politics. Right. 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 So, right. so I got my satisfaction out of recounting the trail that I took. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of fun out of talking about the crazy things that happened in Albany. And needless to say, it's always gratifying when you have all these important people that you've had a dialogue with. Let's, let's talk about some of the crazy things. Not all, but some. Well, uh, you know, I sat in the very last row in the legislative chamber, okay. and the fellow next to me was blind, legally, not legally blind, blind, mm -hmm. and he had a seeing eye dog. Uh -huh. So the distance between myself and the seeing eye dog was maybe six inches. <laughs> so every time I would try to get out of my chair to answer a phone call or anything, the dog started trying to bite me. <laughs> so I tended to sit in my seat a lot more. <laughs> I remember a state senator from Queens uh -huh. who would go to a dinner taken a, a, a slab of roast beef, put it in a napkin, put it in his pocket <laughs> to take it back to the hotel room. Oh. I carried quite a few legislators from the evening from the bar and the hotel uh -huh. up to their rooms because they couldn't make it, you know? Oh my goodness. So I would s s help support them to get them back to their rooms. <laughs> mm. uh, you know, there was a time years ago when alcohol was a problem, right, okay? Right, right. Today, you know, the issue is always probably alcohol, but more than likely maybe drugs who people have a problem. Right. But in those years, people in order to uh, work with the stress, right. you know, you, you could smell on their breath at nine o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. that they've already had a few drinks. Wow. Um, the legislative process, uh -huh. working your way, remember I was in the majority for right. uh, five years, mm -hmm. then I went into the minority for five years, Is that right? and then I went back into the majority. Huh. The challenge was more during the minority. How do you stay relevant? Right. right and you know, right. when I, like, for instance, um, I, I wrote all my own press releases. I always did. Mm -hmm. So I did my own press work. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. how do you attract attention to yourself? Uh, right. The Long Island Railroad was a thing of controversy even more then. And then I said, you know, the public's entitled to a voice. The Long Island Railroad wouldn't give them a voice, mm -hmm. and so I rented the Garden City Hotel, a major ballroom, mm -hmm. and had a thousand people who came wow. to talk about their issues. Wow! So that was, you, you learn as a public official that mm -hmm. you've got to give the people a voice, mm -hmm. and that, mm -hmm. that's, that's part of this book. Mm -hmm. And you know, in, in Albany, you know, there are, there are some members who were proud of the fact that they never spent the night there. They used to come on Monday morning, go home on Monday night. Uh -huh. Didn't want to stay around. Oh, okay. there were there were members of the speaker. My first speaker, mm -hmm. Anthony Travia, mm -hmm. uh, was twenty four seven. He mm -hmm. had a room down the hall from me in the hotel. Mm -hmm. He'd come in two o'clock in the morning every night, and mm -hmm. he wasn't partying. Mm -hmm. He was just a, a legislative. He, he was he was addicted to being the speaker. Never left the uh, platform that he was conducting mm -hmm. the, the the sessions from. Wow. I mean, you, you used to say to himself, you know, any normal human being would leave once in a while just to walk right. off. Never did that. Wow. But there were a lot of fascinating people. Um, I'll tell you quickly my favorite story sure. about Nelson Rockefeller. Okay. Um, I bought a book, a, a photo, a oil painting, uh -huh. which was painted by a person convicted of murder who mm. was in Attica prison, mm. and it was a painting of John Kennedy. Okay. The day after I bought it, n mm. for thirty-five dollars, Nelson Rockefeller called me, and said, "I like that painting," mm. and I said, mm. "Governor, it's just a painting by a prisoner." He said, mm. "I like it." Mm. Offered me a hundred dollars. It went up to $300. <laughs> and then I said, you know, I'm only making $7,500 a year. That's tempting. And then in the end, I said, no. 
Let me fast forward from 1966 to 1974. Uh -huh. He became Vice President of the United States, right. and I was on the reception line in Washington uh -huh. to congratulate him as mm -hmm. a legislative leader. Right, right. And when I got to him, he turned to me without me ever saying, hello, my name is, and he said, you never wanted to sell me that painting. <laughs> I will never forget it. Wow. So, I mean, and then when I saw him subsequently, at least two or three times, uh -huh. he would go like this and never forget about the painting, <laughs> you know? So, so I, I said to him, listen, you have all these, you, you, have, you have the gods, you have right. this, you have that. I said, well, you know, what would you need my painting? Mm -hmm. I figured out in later years, because it was such a great likeness mm -hmm. of John Kennedy mm -hmm. and was a copy of, of a Wyeth painting, right. he wanted to have it on his wall and have people admire it and say, who do you think painted it? And then he would tell them it was a convicted murderer. Wow. So that was his value, basically. Exactly. So yeah. that's why I couldn't figure out until later years why he wanted it so badly. So Jerry, let me ask you this question out of uh, your wisdom, right? Is it is it good to do something crazy, meaning that, you know, you didn't sell the painting, that's why he remembered you. Right. If he would have sold his, your painting, he may not have remembered you. Well, I'm, you know, I, I am a believer. Uh, I'll tell you, there's two things that come out of this book for right. me in politics. Okay. Okay. Number one, three, defy right. conventional wisdom. Mm -hmm. Don't always follow the, the exact s straight path. Okay. If you're going to embark on anything, right. you can't do it halfway. Mm -hmm. I wanted to run for speaker, right. and at the end of the game, right. uh, people w were con asking me not to continue my fight, and that was a mistake, mm -hmm. because I had a certain number of Republican votes mm -hmm. and Democratic votes, and I could have had it. Mm -hmm. And just to be a good guy and for the uh, so-called, uh, to, to be a good party person, mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. sometimes you just can't do that. Mm -hmm. You've got to go right to the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the last mm -hmm. thing is, mm -hmm. don't go into public office just to have a title. Mm -hmm. You know, go in there w and build an agenda mm -hmm. and try to figure out how to help people. Mm -hmm. Be responsive, mm -hmm. reach out for people, mm -hmm. make yourself mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. And I think that's mm -hmm. the route to a successful career. Mm. And it's a, it's a lot of work though, right? I mean, it's a lot of well, work I, for becoming a legislator. My, m my family of my two older daughters and my late wife, right. they sacrificed a lot. Exactly. You know, they did not see me a lot. Uh, yeah. I'd come home at the end of the week. Right. I used to drag my poor daughters out to all these breakfasts mm. and lunches mm -hmm. and functions mm -hmm. so that I could see them. Right. And it was very hard on my wife. She was raising kids when they mm -hmm. were having a 105 degree temperature mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. kinds of things. And mm -hmm. I was uh, 200 miles away. So it's mm -hmm. tough on the family. Yeah, but it's a sacrifice, big sacrifice actually. Well, you, you got to make your mind up from day one that you're prepared right. to do it. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Now, you know, in, in Albany, obviously, there are three most powerful people in Albany. Right. Right. One is the governor, of, obviously. Right. And then there is a Senate majority leader. Right. And assembly ma majority leader. Right. Or, right? Speaker, right. Speaker. So right. these are the three people who really uh, do a lot of kind of maneuvering and, I mean, how does it work on the, ba on the back? Like, you know, they are the one who decide, like, you know, budget, like budget time, obviously. Right. Well, the, they're, they're, they're right lately there's four people in a room because there's a power sharing agreement mm -hmm. in the Senate. Okay. So you have four oh people. Yeah, that's right. But, you know, my philosophy about that is people keep saying, this is a terrible thing, you know, three or four men in the room making all the decisions. Right. Well, the answer to that is you can't have mob rule. You can't have all the members of the assembly deciding right. what should be in the budget. Right. Individual committee chairs should give their input. Right. But you can't have uh, 149 other people saying this is what you've got to do mm -hmm. in order to get mm -hmm. your work done. Mm -hmm. So yes, you need a leader and there's mm -hmm. nothing evil mm -hmm. about these mm -hmm. three or four mm -hmm. people in a room. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, but, but then, you know, they are the one who normally controls everything. That's, that's the name of the system. That's the name of the system. Right. So you got to go with it then. Well, I mean, you live with it. I mean, look, I was chairman of Ways and Means and my, my right. speaker made me his co-equal. Right. We, we met every week, two, three times a week, mm -hmm. went over an agenda, mm -hmm. invited me to meetings with the governor, mm -hmm. included mm -hmm. me in everything, mm -hmm. which is very rare. Mm -hmm. uh, leaders generally don't believe in power sharing, mm -hmm. but he felt that, I, uh, that the suburbs <laughs> were important mm -hmm. and that I, I, I should have a voice mm -hmm. in, in that little group. And mm -hmm. so uh, I wound up going to many leaders' meetings where the typical members will never mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. So Sally Silver, what do you think about him? Is Interesting he man. He's yeah. going to be there for... He's going to be there a while. He's going to be there He's going to be there as long as he wants to be there. Oh, okay. okay. He's a neighborhood kid who right. became the speaker. Right. Um, I underestimated him. 
Mm -hmm. I've never thought that that was his interest. Mm -hmm. um, he understands how to build a majority. Mm -hmm. He has members who are very loyal to him. Right. And the net result of it is, you know, mm -hmm. Maybe the certain papers don't like him, maybe certain political people don't like him, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. he's there to stay as long as he wants to. Wow, okay. So he's still a um, deep power. He's still a big power. Big power there, okay. Good. So that he's in the cities, obviously. City gets a lot of benefit out of it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it helps. Look, he, he obviously has a bias towards the city, right? but he has legislators from Long Island who he talks to a lot. Mm -hmm. Upstate mm -hmm. people. I mean, he's very inclusive, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons why he's still Speaker. Wow. Mm -hmm. You are a political commentator for News 12. Yes, sir. And you have been there for a while. Uh, so let's talk about the election, last election, which, you know, a rematch of oh, count yeah. Nassau County Executive. Uh, everyone, every pundits that I spoke to, they were all thinking there will you know, there'll be a very small lead. I mean, there will be a very narrow margin of winning. Right. Instead of that, it came out to be 18 points. That's a lot. Um, I, I think um, the challenger, Tom mm. Swasey, who had been county executive, right. uh, didn't establish a reasoning, a reason mm. for the people to throw out the current incumbent, mm. Mangano. Mm -hmm. um, he brought up issues mm -hmm. that didn't resonate with the public. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. talk to them about uh, tax, tax claims, and you can talk to them about sewer debt, and you can talk about all those things. but. I have a, this philosophy, it, if mm. it takes more than three minutes to explain it, you're in trouble. Mm. So the mm. answer is he couldn't get his message across. Mm -hmm. And then f most people liked Mangano. So he mm. came in with, mm -hmm. you know, uh, S Hurricane Sandy helped him a lot, right. gave right. him my visibility. <coughs> and But mm -hmm. Swazi never made the case, and I think he underestimated. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of politicians are guilty of one thing, right. and that is falling in love with themselves. Ah. Okay, uh -huh. and I think his problem was uh, he's a good candidate, he's a handsome man, he's very smart, but right. he really got to believe that he was invincible, mm -hmm. and you're not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, I think you're right. I mean, there was, like, voting also was not as big, right? I mean, 26, 27 percent or whatever. This is what we call in politics an off year. Off Next year, year right. when uh, you have congressional races and mm -hmm. governor, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to get more people coming. You're going to get more people coming in, right, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, to me, you know, I have interviewed uh, Tom Swazi and Mangano both, you know, here on the show. And uh, obviously, Mangano, the way I feel it, is a very, you know, simple person. I mean, he's he a, comes out as a very a street, simple. He's a street person. He right. Is. He's a street person. Walks the streets in the community. Right. When, right. when he was a county legislator, right. he was hands on mm -hmm. doing community mm -hmm. forums, representing mm -hmm. his people. Mm -hmm. I know I met with him on one or two occasions mm -hmm. about local issues when he was mm -hmm. a legislator. Mm -hmm. And he was very protective of his constituents. Mm -hmm. So he's. Uh, he's uh, but th that's what works in politics. That resonates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He comes off as a guy who cares about the little guy. Mm. And he's a very simple, I mean, you know, uh, easy to approach. Very much so. You know, he's, what you see is what you get. I right. mean, he's very right. fascinating in that right. regard. Right. No I mean, pretenses, you know. Mm -hmm, he's mm -hmm. just Ed, and, you know, he'll talk to you about whatever he wants to talk about. Right, right, yeah. And Swazi doesn't come across that way. That's no, way. I, no. Many people are, you know. He's saying. very smart. And he's he, a very smart man. Yeah, but I think the problem is, is that, you know, there's, there, there's the little guy out there wants somebody who's going to relate to them, mm -hmm. who's mm -hmm. going to look them in the eye right, and right, say, right. tell me about your problems right, right. and let me feel your pain. Mm -hmm. Tom is not that kind of person. Mm. Um, what is the future for Chairman Jay Jacobs? Um, hard to say. You know, it's not a job that anybody wants. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So start out with that premise. Exactly, because I don't know who next could be, right? I nobody. Mean, you know, I don't see anybody. No, you know, and no, no sitting political elected official is going to want to have that job, right, the right. two hats. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's not like anybody's going to oust him. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody wants a job. Anybody wants, no, yeah, you're right, yeah. I don't think Tom Northam said, you know, they, they, are, they don't have anybody either. No, that's, so he's going to... Um, he's, he will be leader as long as he wants to be leader. What about Kathleen Rice? Well, the rumor is now she's going to run for Congress next year if Carolyn McCarthy steps down, mm -hmm. which there's a strong possibility. There's a strong possibility. And Kathleen Rice, I think, she likes being a district attorney, I think, but she's ready to, to move up. get out of there. Right, 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 yeah. So she'd probably like mm -hmm. Congress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about 2016. 
election, you know, the president's election, right? right? I mean, obviously, you know, uh, President Obama term is over, so they'll have, a, and Hillary Clinton's name is coming up all the time on the Democratic side. Do right. you still, do you think that way? Oh, I, 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 I mean, I think she's it. If, if she doesn't run, then, you know, Vice President Biden would like to run. I'm not so sure he can really get the thing going. Right. Uh, there's a lot of Democratic governors who are really very good, mm -hmm. who might you know move up into that realm. Mm -hmm. But I think mm -hmm. I, I think she knows what she wants to do, and I think she wants to run, and she's biding her time. She does she doesn't want to undermine the president, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. she's just taking her time. But she's building, you know, little bit little momentum, mm -hmm. and you know she she will be hard to beat. But she has to really announce early. I mean, two years. It need two years, right? Well. Uh, my feeling is that she'll, if she's going to do it, mm -hmm. she'll send the signal in 2014. Right. Early. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. You know, uh, so let, <laughs> let's say mid-year, but that's when I think she'll let the word at, know that mm -hmm. she's testing the waters. She's not running right. yet. Right. She's right. Testing, testing the water. The water. Right. Because, you know, you need a lot of money, too, obviously. Right. You know, raise the money she'll and everything. She'll raise it. Yep. She'll raise it. Yep. Right. Against her, who you think? Chris Christie? You know, it's a very tough call in the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. Christie is, it could, is a very viable candidate, mm -hmm. but he has to survive the primaries. And who votes in these primaries? The very far right people mm -hmm. who don't think he's one of them. Mm -hmm. So he's got to get by that. You know, Jeb Bush would like to run, but Jeb Bush is considered moderate. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Christie mm -hmm. is much more conservative, but I think he's, he's going to run into this whatever's left of the Tea Party movement when mm -hmm. he runs, mm -hmm. and if he runs, which he will probably. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he's a, it, it, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he falls by the wayside. Mm. Oh, so you think right now, I mean, he's on the top, but then he may fall. The Republican Party hasn't come off the, uh, where they are now, which is the far right. Mm -hmm. They have to move to the center, mm -hmm. but they're not ready to move yet. Mm -hmm. I think Democrat also has the uh, advantage of electoral votes, right? And I mean, start with, begin with, they got already one, 145 or 150. Well, it, it really goes it even really higher than that. Right? It Some helps people a lot. tell me it's 212. 212? That's right, because they take the blue states right. and what they call the purple states, yes, which okay. are like Virginia, right? and they basically say if you combine some of these other states mm. with the blue states, mm -hmm. it's up to over 200. Hmm. And they're going on the theory that the purple states will be Democratic, but the chances are they are because they have large Hispanic populations. Right, right. And you know, and and and, and a lot of people mm -hmm. who, who who more than likely will vote Democratic. Hmm. What is the you know next four years for Mangano administration? What do you think uh, is gonna? Well, it's it's a challenge. It's a challenge. Know, okay. He has a control board, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. which is uh, saying what they can do and what mm -hmm. they can't do. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's hard. Mm -hmm. um, he's got mm -hmm. debt problems to mm -hmm. solve. Mm -hmm. The people would like to have something new done, you know, mm -hmm. that's meaningful. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, he, he might want to consider himself a viable candidate, you know, some years from now to run for statewide office. Oh. But he's so he's going to have to get some things done mm. that are different than the first four years. Oh, okay. So something new that he has to put up. Well, he can't rely. I on mean, you know, the the uh, Nassau Coliseum and all that. Coliseum is good if it works out. It works out. We don't know whether the people who've made the winning proposal are going to get the money, you mm -hmm. know, from the mm -hmm. private sector mm -hmm. to do this mm -hmm. job. That won't mm -hmm. happen until mm -hmm. 2014. So you know, the the jury's still out on <laughs> that whether that's really going to happen. Mm. Now let me ask you one more question uh, the, about the long about Long Island, right? Now you know we know that Long Island is not getting its fair share from the Alban, from Albany, right? And it's always a issue that we get like we give them twenty and get, get only like twelve, maybe something like right. that. Right. So uh, and and the way this all these you know different different organizations like Long Island Association, ListNet, and HIA, and there's so many different different organ you know organizations here, right? Um, I was at the presentation when, you know, people from Buffalo, Buffalo came in and they made as one whole Buffalo. Long Island, can we do that like as one whole Long Island rather no. than? I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Long Island starts in Montauk Point and it ends in Brooklyn. Mm. But when it comes to Nassau and Suffolk, mm. the two county executives, they, they meet once in a while 
but mm. they go their own way. Mm. They do compete with each other, mm. which has been always been the mistake. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is, if mm -hmm. Long Island was more unified, right, then Long Island could be effective. Right. You know, we have we have uh, nine, ten of these different, you know. Uh, groups, you know, mm -hmm. LIA, this one, that one. Mm -hmm. uh, in New York City, they have the New York City Partnership. Mm. That's it, you yes. know, of the major organizations. Right, right. And all we need to have the Business Council. Right. In Long Island, and they've got nine, ten different groups right. who don't work together. Who don't work together. So they're not effective. They need a common agenda. How about Accelerate Long Island? Like, you know, see, the m my my thing is, is main is ego, basically. Right. You know, ego is the in, in territory, territorial, right? Basically, it's, this is my territory. I don't want anybody to invade here. Right. I mean, that's the major issue here. Well, that's the, there's the rivalry is down to not only philosophical but personal. Mm, wow. Everybody wants to be important. Yeah, right. 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 Wow. That that means there are too many smart people here. Well, then they're not working. Together. The net result <laughs> is they get nothing done. Right. You know, remember, Long Island is in population wise bigger than about 18 states right it's right. but they don't flex their their muscles muscles right yeah any hope i always hope you always hope right well thank you so much for joining us today i really appreciate your time thank you thank you for joining us today if you have any questions comments you can email me at rajmitv at gmail.com again that's rajmitv at gmail.com if you would like to watch our prior shows you can watch on YouTube at youtube.com slash Infosys International. Again, that's youtube.com slash Infosys International. Until next time, have a great week. Thank you.